Walking Dead, Dead City, Episode 4, Everybody Wins a Prize. Probably my favorite episode of the season so far. There's only six episodes, so I mean, there's only four so far. But th- it is my favorite. It is my favorite for, for sure. For a few reasons. It's not just the beginning, but it was it was really a fun episode. And it just, it once again reminds me of just how much better this spinoff has been doing compared to the other Walking Dead spinoffs. Like, I, I always compare it because this is another Walking Dead spinoff, and this one is phenomenally better than what we've had in any other Walking Dead spinoff. It is crazy. So let's get into this. So we start the episode out, and this is our first shot. Longtime Walking Dead fans, obviously, if you're watching Dead City, you probably have watched all of The Walking Dead already. You know where this location is. You can tell something's a little different. This is not a Negan of a current time. This is Negan way in the past now. This is Savior Negan before he even ran into Rick's group. This is Savior Negan while he was, I guess, he still had the Croat with him. So we're jumping back. Our, this is a flashback. And this is a flashback that can be really interesting if it's just like Negan and then you show the Croat. But we get a little, we get a little extra something and I think it is just... I love it. I think it's great. So we get a little bit of a flashback to the Saviors once again with Savior Negan, uh, well before he even ran into Rick. So we see Negan. He's sitting at the table. You can see Lucille sitting there, leaned up against the chair, all those good things. And then we also get a little cameo of Simon. Simon from The Walking Dead. If you remember Simon, he was uh, Negan's right-hand man in season seven and eight. I think Negan killed him. I think in, in eight, sometime in eight, uh, as he was trying to take over the Saviors. Basically, he was starting to turn against Negan, and Negan took him out. But Simon was always a fun character. He really was. He was a psychopath. He really was. He was just a crazy dude. He's a psychopath in a different way compared to like the Croat. But uh, Simon was a fun character. He really was. He made the whole savior thing. I know a lot of people think it dragged down a little much. Maybe it did. It's a good binge though. Uh, the whole savior all out war arc. Uh, and Simon is like a great character. I think he's awesome. So Really cool to see Simon again, and it's just again this is a little flashback back to the Saviors, and we get to see a little bit of how the Croat operated. We got to, we get to see a little bit of what Negan told us like an episode or two ago about you know how the Croat operated and you know why he turned on the Croat and got rid of him basically. So we got a shot of a Savior Negan again, and Simon walks and he basically says the Croat is doing his thing, and they're gonna go and see what's going on because. Um, this does not seem to be w- how it was supposed to go. You gotta go talk to the Croat because things aren't going the way they want it to. So you got a little bit more of the interior of the sanctuary. Really cool to see that again. Um, I- I'm sure they just recreated it. I don't know if they still have that location of the sanctuary where they filmed. But um, you get to see the sanctuary again. You see Simon and Negan just kind of hanging out again. Negan walking around with Lucille. Really good to see it. This is kind of nice to see. Uh, and then we see the Croat. They open the door down the hall and the Croat's in there. And we're jumping right to that scene where Negan explained that he basically took captive a, a young girl from the kingdom. And he tortured her and we assume killed her. And that's exactly what we get to see. So Negan, he walks in and the Croat, he want you know, he tries to like explain himself. And, you know, he, this is the way I do things. Is this the way it has to be and everything like that? I'm like, no, that's, that's, they're really trying to hammer in the idea now that the saviors and Negan and everything like that are just, they're not about harming children. And kids are off limits of, you know, harming or killing or whatever. And that is something they try to do with Negan in the main show of The Walking Dead 2 later. It's still weird to me because of just how Negan operated in seasons 7 and 8 where, like, you know, he would almost willingly kill Carl in certain parts. Like, it was, it's strange, but I'm just kind of accepting it at this point that this is just kind of an idea and a philosophy that Negan, you know, accepted and maybe he was just even breaking his own rules because Rick was just such a target for him I don't know uh but it is kind of interesting that they're they're really trying to hammer down like Negan anyone who goes after kids he's gonna take this guy out he really is so he sees he sees this girl and he looks over and she's in this chair and I'm assuming she's dead so she's dead and the Croat 
I guess, got the information he needed. I don't know if it's really necessarily important in this scenario, but the important thing is that we get to see what the Croat does and how he, you know, he's the torturer for Negan, and he just went too far. So Simon is pissed off too. He's like, we don't do this to kids. We Kids are off limits. You don't. You don't kill kids and stuff like that. So Simon's pissed, Negan's pissed, and we can assume what happened right after is Negan shot at the Croat and or, or shortly after at some point, shot at the Croat, took his ear off, and he got away. That's how that's how the story went. So I didn't actually expect to see this because Negan already went through explaining the whole thing. I guess we didn't really need to see it, but I'm glad we did. It was good to see Simon again. Um, I really like Simon as a character. His his time on The Walking Dead was Pretty short-lived, but it was fun. It was a fun time during the Savior arc there with that character. Pretty fun character. So good to see him again. And then we jump back to the present time. So it's like 12, 15 years later now in the timeline. It's pretty crazy how far we are now uh, in the time. So obviously last episode, Negan and Luther, you know, Luther was the one guy with the group and he basically confronted Negan and Negan basically killed him. I, I get Luther kind of killed himself in a way. He attacked Negan, Negan defended himself, but Negan killed Luther. That's how the episode ended him standing over Luther. Now everyone's wondering where is this guy? And uh, they never really find out throughout the episode. I think Maggie ends up you know, kind of like figuring it out a little bit later. She realizes something later, but uh, no one else really figures out what happens to him yet. But Negan is obviously kind of just playing it cool. He's not really telling them what happened. He says, oh, Luther wasn't even really with our whole plan of going into the, the stadium anyway. So, like, why why should we really care where he went? So, they're like, okay, maybe he just didn't want to be on the mission. Obviously, that's not true. He's dead. So, uh, they get ready for their mission. Negan and Maggie, they kind of split off. Negan mentions to Maggie that, like, every time I get closer to the Croat, I'm seeing, like, a shadow or an echo of something I no longer want to be, and that's because the Croat's basically trying to echo. He's, he basically echoes a lot of the stuff Negan used to echo and say because uh, that's obviously what they're playing off here is, like, uh, the Croat wants to become the new Negan in a way. He wants to, you know, create a sanctuary. He's calling his place, like, a sanctuary, and people are a resource. That's, that's, that's the thing they're doing with the Croat here. So he's not necessarily, like, this... Um, brand new, very creatively done villain. Like, he is very specifically a villain created to mimic, like, a savior type of villain where he wants to be Negan, but his own type of Negan in a way. Uh, that's kind of what they're doing with the Crow app. We get this really, I just, I just put this in my list of images here. There's some really cool visuals in this show. Um, you can, you can always tell that this, some of this stuff is like CG done and stuff like that, but it does look very cool. And this specific shot here, when they were showing the city again, really cool. Um, it just gives that, that different vibe. Like I know the walking dead itself has always done all these, these scenes and shots within the woods. It makes sense. It's probably really cheap to do. Um, but, you know, you get to see this, like, sidewalk with benches and, a, you know, a street light. And it's just, like, all worn down. The world has fallen and, the, you know, nature's taking over again. It's just really cool and it's, like, all hazy. It's just, like, this is the apocalypse in the city. So, uh, really cool there. And then Negan, Maggie, and all the group are running through. They make it through, like, underneath into the stadium. They, they go on their way that they figured out, their little path. And they get in there and then they go into several rooms, basically, looking for Herschel because they don't really know where he is. They're just kind of looking around these different rooms. They run into this one room where there's this like one kid strapped to a chair and it looks like it could be Herschel. It's not Herschel. It ends up being some random kid. Negan kills the walker. But uh, yeah, it's not Herschel, but it really sent Maggie on a very stressful moment. That just for a quick moment, like, is that my son? Is my son dead right in front of me? But no, he's in another room. I didn't expect them to just kill Herschel off screen. Before they get into the stadium, they kind of huddle together and they basically go over the plan one more time. Negan and Maggie are going to go separately and distract the Croat. Negan in particular is going to, you know, get the Croat to side off and not be you know in the area so then the others can get into the basically the stadium and like i don't know find the croat and kill him or something like that it's just it's negan and maggie are splitting off and the group is going into the main center area to find the croat and negan's gonna kind of be a distraction i guess that's kind of what the plan is and maggie is gonna go and try to find her son because that's her whole mission and this is where maggie starts to suspect that something happened with i 
I think this is where she's suspecting something's happening with Negan and Luther, where uh, she sees this like metal canteen that he put in his bag earlier. And I don't know if this is something that Luther had earlier. Um, I don't, I don't remember if he did or not, but she's definitely suspecting him. And I think this is where she's realizing like something happened to Luther from Negan. And he's like, Oh, I can easily explain what happened. And she's, she's not really hearing it. She doesn't really want to hear it at the moment. They have a mission to do, but yeah, she was about to tell him about her knowing that Ginny is on the island and she's, you know, she found the dino and everything like that. I don't know if she actually burned the dino because we ended the episode last week where she was like ready to burn the dinosaur, the, the stuffed dinosaur. Uh, I don't know if she did that or not, but I know we saw Ginny there watching her and I know she. Uh, Ginny is there basically trying to follow Negan and she was about to tell him that doesn't tell him and that's kind of where we leave so Negan still doesn't know that Ginny's on the island but we'll see Ginny quite soon so we get this one weird scene with the Croat and it's right before basically the whole fight begins uh, he's like in this control room where like there's this girl sitting in a chair and he's like talking to her really weirdly he's like you don't have to be afraid of me don't worry why are you so afraid of me I will protect you and stuff like that and it's just really creepy they made it kind of creepy he's like a creepy character character in general like obviously like you can't trust this guy and she's kind of like in his cult and she doesn't want to be so he, you know he has her putting in this disc that's going to set something off and the disc is going to play something in five minutes so we'll see where that plays off just a little bit later we'll get to that too but uh he basically has this whole thing set up to he already knows it seems like he's got an idea of what's about to go down anyways and he's getting things all set up so as that is happening, the Croat hears a whistle. It's the famous savior whistle that Negan always does. The Croat now uses it too. Obviously, he now knows that Negan is in the area. So Negan is taunting him. And he's like a grown child whenever this stuff happens. You can see the Croat. He's like all giddy and happy. He's like getting all like excited. Like, Negan's in the area. Negan, where are you, Negan? Um interesting dynamic between these two characters uh especially it's just interesting because this is a character we never saw before these obviously he existed in the time with the saviors before we even met the saviors so uh we get to see like this old relationship that negan like had with this this psychopath and then we get to see it come back to basically haunt Negan and just it's it's really interesting it is interesting so we get the Maggie and she's basically gonna continue with her mission here and she jumps in one of the like, like these working taxis or cars she's about to go off and she sees Ginny Ginny is following them Ginny uh she basically steps out from wherever she was she's there of course she is uh I don't know how she even got in there and I guess she's not really in there she's kind of like on the out on the side um, of the area but she's in there and she sees Maggie Maggie sees her and Maggie chases after her so we get this shot here of someone lighting a candle and that is a very important shot there because it will play something later in this episode we saw in the teaser last week too someone lighting this candle doesn't really seem like much but it actually is something quite significant that happens a little bit later just a little bit later uh, in the episode here so someone lights a match so it just once again preps that Something, something's ready. They, the Croats got something ready for them. They're not going in totally unsuspecting what they may think they are. Uh, Negan is obviously kind of hiding be behind a bunch of cars. He is taunting the Croat. And he's doing his whistle. And the Croat's whistling back. And he's sending his men out. And he wants to find Negan, basically. So... He sends all his men out. He keeps two guys and he wants to find Negan. So he says, we have a visitor. Let's go find him. So our group, they enter the arena and it's empty. There's nobody there. No, not even walkers in there. There's nothing. So obviously something has happened. Uh, it's empty. Nobody's in the area. So something he knew, he knew something and he, or he suspected that they would be coming. So he had no one in the area and it's kind of all set up already that yeah, you're walking into a trap. So, Ginny's there, they, you know, Maggie chases after Ginny, runs back into the group, and they're basically in there while music starts to play, because this is, this is what the Croat had the, the one kid put into the player, is they got a bunch of, like, you know, classical, like, soft music playing while you got all these things going off, so... You get you cut back to the candle, and the candle is actually lit to a barrel, and you can immediately tell what's about to happen here is the barrel is set to blow up, and you got all the walkers on the other side of the glass there. So 
The barrel blows up. You can see they cut to a shot on the side of the arena here where several entrances are blowing up. So you're literally just letting in all the walkers from outside that we saw episodes back now. There's a bunch of walkers surrounding this whole arena and they're letting them in. So that that's what the whole idea here is. The Croat already kind of had an idea. He had everything set up and uh, they're letting the walkers in. So here come the walkers. And we get this whole really cool scene. I think it's really cool, actually. I don't know, just the way the music was playing. And they, they're they basically outnumbered. They got walkers coming from every direction. Uh, they got walkers coming from above, too, like in the upper levels of the arena. So they got walkers coming from everywhere. So they let him in in every possible location he could. And it basically comes down to them just fighting off as many walkers as they can. But you can obviously know at some point you see this big empty arena, caged off arena in the center. Like you can you can go into that ring and basically be safe. But I don't know if that was his plan or not. But they do end up going into the center ring at some point. Maggie rips off like the side padding. And this is kind of silly to me because she rips off the side padding of the, the ring and they use it as shields. So that's how they kind of escape the area. So there's so many walkers, they can't fight them. Like I would have kind of assumed they can't fight all the walkers, they find some sort of way out. But she grabs the siding of the ring and she has everyone else grab some and they use it as shields. So everyone in the area, they grab the siding and they just walk out. And they kill a few walkers, obviously. They kill a few on their way out. And it's kind of silly because like, I don't think they would have made it out with those. I think they would have easily been taken over with how many walkers there were. But just take it for what it is. It is what it is. Sometimes in these shows, they do some they do some really silly things when they when they're dealing with walkers and how they're killing walkers and stuff. It they always go a little above and beyond on how they want to survive and you know how they take them out. I, I kind of just accept it at this point. It is what it is. It doesn't really take away from story or anything so uh but i also see the, all these walkers and all the, these walkers that they brought in i see it as a perfect way i saw it as a perfect way for them to literally uh clean clean house so we got rid of most of the group most of their group besides our obviously our main characters of the group of course of that new group are dead so they killed everyone off in the group except for like these main two uh, and then you got Ginny and maggie there so those those four are gonna go off and escape into the sewers which we saw later so they made it out they made it into a different room uh closed the door behind them put something in front of it and they have to escape negan on the other hand he runs into the croat so he's obviously been taunting the croat and he eventually gets the drop on him he's below and he's got his gun thing pointed at him so they talk for a little while and he mentions how you know the croat has heard he's heard a lot of things i've heard about your war with the kingdom and the hilltop and alexandria and he brings up all those things and he kind of mentions like this is a sanctuary we can create a new sanctuary it's like this this whole villain thing of like join me again you know we can we can do this thing again together and we can we can be the saviors again type of thing obviously negan's not going to go with that it's not something he wants to do anymore so the Croat, they have this nice chat. Then he brings out the marshal. He initially mentions like, oh, I know what you want, Negan. I'll bring him out. And Negan obviously is there for Herschel. Negan obviously doesn't care about the marshal. Obviously, he probably doesn't want to see the marshal. He doesn't care, really. Um, but he brings out the marshal. The marshal, I had this idea within a few episodes that like the marshal and the croat would somehow team up in some weird way obviously last episode they weren't he was like the prisoner for the croat but at the end of the episode he mentions like he's after negan so it's like i think okay maybe the marshal and the croat are going to team up and it's going to be like the you know these two few guys that are now after negan but no like it's kind of that way at the end of this episode but no the croat doesn't give a damn about uh the marshal he literally throws him over the railing like the other guy but he conveniently catches the railing whatever Negan pulls him up Negan saves him just to kind of once again show us that Negan's like this great guy now they do that a lot with Negan I think I I kind of get it now with Negan like okay he, he's changed I can accept that he is definitely changed I don't think they need to continuously show us that he's like this incredible dude who's gonna be like a hero all the time I don't know it, it was kind of like okay why does he care about the marshal I don't know I don't really see a reason for him to care about the marshal because it really doesn't help him in the end at the end of the episode so him saving the marshal there uh doesn't really make a, 
lot of sense in the whole scheme of things. And also, the Croat injures the Marshal too. He shoots one of those grapple things. He rips out like a chunk of his flesh from his leg, and they kind of limp off and escape the Croat for now. So, I don't know if the Croat was. I don't know. It just seemed kind of easy for them to escape. You know, he was down on the lower level there of the the area, and Negan and him just kind of limp away uh so it, it was kind of strange that he just kind of easily got away i don't know uh, i'm sure we'll interact with them once again later it's two episodes left still um so obviously as i said it doesn't play out for negan it doesn't play out well so they kind of escape they get into this little shop or whatever in the city and the marshal immediately turns on negan because the marshal's there for negan the marshal i don't think he's a good guy i really don't like we showed earlier in the season like episode two or whatever, like the marshal's not a good dude. He's not. Like he he shot like one of his 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 partners on the force or whatever, uh, with with no care at all. Like I just don't think he's that good of a guy. And he, he turned on Negan right away. He wants to bring him in. Uh, he's got his grapple gun thing pointed at him. I don't know why they're using those. I think it's kind of silly. Um, but he's got his grapple gun thing pointed at him, and that's how it ends with Negan for now. So he is basically captured. By the the marshal, uh, he's cornered by the marshal after just escaping the Croat. So we'll see where that goes. I think I'm sure they're gonna have a nice long talk about things next episode, and they're gonna convince him to um, basically turn the marshal. You know, get him on his side. Uh, then we had the episode with Maggie and you know Ginny and those two others. They they knew that they need to escape, and we've seen in the trailers, especially for the trailer next week, that they're going to be in the sewers with all the walkers, and we're going to see some really nasty things. We're going to see some mutated, ugly walkers. There's like one big mutated, ugly walker thing that Maggie's fighting in the trailer. Uh, I think next week is going to be really fun for like the the dead and the the walkers. In that terms, I think it's going to be really interesting to see. Um, but they're going into the sewers, and that's where the episode ends. So we're ending the episode. Maggie, Ginny, and all them are into the sewers. Most of the group is dead, except for our main characters, of course. So uh, I, I wouldn't mind these two new main characters sticking around in this show, too. I, I kind of saw them initially as like some characters we'd see. They die, and then we move on. But I wouldn't mind them sticking around. I think they're fine. I think we could do quite a bit with them. Uh, obviously... You know, we've killed off that Luther guy. Their whole group is dead, so where else are they going to hang around except with, like, Maggie and Negan? So, uh, that's where the episode ends. I think this is my favorite episode so far of the season. There's only four episodes, so, I mean, there's not many. I did like episode two quite a bit. Episode one was a good start, but episode two was pretty strong. Uh, but I, I love this episode. I think it's great. And I think... I think the dynamic between the Croat and Negan is interesting. Very interesting. I love the flashback. Um, it's just a little bit. It's not like they did a lot of it. They just did a little bit of like a little tease. They're like, remember? Remember these days? Uh, I, I really love those seasons. I love the whole... I. I the whole savior arc for The Walking Dead is incredibly controversial. It's a big point where a lot of people turn off the show. For me, it's kind of where I joined the show. I joined the show pretty late. And the saviors and all that stuff is right right around where I started, right after binging all the other seasons. And maybe that's just for me then. Maybe that's why I love it so much. I just, I, I love that period of The Walking Dead. It's it's such an interesting time. And I think the whole, it was dragged out, but it's a good binge. And I definitely recommend, if you haven't, I'm sure you have if you're watching this show, but if you haven't or uh, haven't watched it in a while, go back and watch it. Go back and binge The Savior arc. It's, it's really good. But, Good ties back to the Savior arc. I really love seeing Simon again. The dynamic... Be again, we're still seeing Maggie's story, too. Like, you know, I talk about Negan a lot. Negan is a heavy focus in this show, but Maggie is still getting her story in. You know, she's still trying to find her son. You can see these different... Um, interactions with her and Ginny and her and how she wants to interact with Negan if she wants to seemingly care for Negan in some weird way or just be cold to Negan and not tell him about Ginny at all it's it's an interesting story for her and I think the story with her and Ginny could be interesting too because uh, it's like some other kid that now she has to protect as well along with trying to find her son. So Maggie's story is interesting too. I think they could do a little bit more, hopefully they do in the next few episodes, but um, it's a good show. It's a very good show. It's a very solid spinoff. And I'm enjoying this more, I think, than the last season of The Walking Dead. The last season of The Walking Dead, like the, the last few episodes were probably better, but the last season in general was very, 
iffy. It was kind of strange. Like, I don't know how I really felt on it, but this, this show, it's good. It's very good. And I, I really hope they nail these last two episodes. And I think we're going to get more too. I think we're going to get another season at least. And we'll see where it goes. Good show though. I really like it. And we'll see where episode five goes.